Hey everyone, it's Nicole, also known as Nikki Vegan, and today we're going to make a vegan blueberry pie. We're going to make the pie and the pie crust from scratch, and I'm going to show you how to make a delicious, buttery, flaky, golden brown pie crust without using any dairy at all, and we'll fill it with a jammy blueberry pie filling made from frozen fruit. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed, and let's get started making a pie crust from scratch. There's only five ingredients in this pie crust and it starts with all-purpose flour. Whenever I measure out flour, I always like to use a big spoon and kind of fluff it up and shake it around like this. That's gonna make sure that it's not too compact and we get a more accurate measurement. I'll scoop it into my measuring cup, level it off, and add some flour to the bowl as well as some salt and sugar. You don't need a lot, this is just gonna add a little bit of flavor. Whisk to combine and then add in your cold cubed butter. You wanna make sure it's really cold. Pretty much every pie crust recipe you're gonna see is gonna tell you to use cold butter. And if you're anything like me, you may be wondering, well, why does it matter if the butter's cold? It's gonna go into the oven and it's not gonna be cold, so who cares? The reason for that is because cold butter equals flaky pie crust. Remember that, because we wanna keep the butter cold throughout the whole process. And the reason for that is because butter is not just fat. It's not only fat, it also has water. Water. and when fat is cold it's solid so it basically helps to contain that water you can imagine like the fat sort of like holding on to the moisture and it's going to get mixed in with flour and so if it's still cold it's going to retain some of that water so that when it goes into the oven that water is still intact and it can evaporate and create steam between the layers of flour and create a flaky crust if it's too warm when you're mixing it with the flour it's just gonna melt and all of that water is just gonna get absorbed by the flour so that when it goes into the oven, there's no steam that's gonna be created to create those layers. So that is why you want the butter to be cold and it's actually a really important step. So the first thing I do when I make my pie crust before I do anything else is I cut up the butter into little tiny cubes and then I pop it in the refrigerator or sometimes even the freezer to get it really, really nice and cold. And if at any point during the process I'm mixing and I feel like the butter is getting really soft or there's any kind of sheen or greasiness, you can just put the whole bowl back in the refrigerator and it will just take like five or ten minutes to firm back up and you can just continue on but you just don't want it to melt because that is going to mean that you're not going to have a very flaky or tender crust i used earth balance while i was recipe testing this just because it has great flavor it's widely accessible it's budget friendly but i also use melt sticks and i really liked those as well instead of incorporating the dough with your hands you can go ahead and use a fork and just kind of mash it like you're making mashed banana like for you know, banana bread or pancakes. And I like to kind of mash downward while I rotate the bowl with my other hand. And I'm gonna add my water. You can do between six and seven tablespoons. You don't want it to be super wet and sticky. You just want enough moisture so that it comes together. Then we're gonna knead it into a ball. You don't wanna knead for a long time, like when you're making bread or pizza. We're just gonna knead to bring it together on a lightly floured surface. And then I cut it into thirds. The smaller piece, the first third is gonna be for the top. And the other two pieces are for the base. Now you want to wrap it tightly and form a disc. Normally I wrap this in this parchment paper that I have that's non-toxic and compostable and biodegradable and all that stuff, but I ran out of it so I had to use plastic wrap on this day. But you want to use something that is really going to keep it airtight so that no moisture gets in and dries out the dough. Then you're going to form it into a disc like this and let it chill in the fridge for about an hour. I usually break pie making up into kind of sections of my day instead of doing it all at once. Making a homemade pie is one of those great desserts that is also an activity. It's kind of a baking project so I like to just kind of tinker with it throughout the day or throughout the course of a weekend just to you know have like a creative fun outlet. In the meantime I make a jammy blueberry filling with blueberry jam, frozen blueberries, cornstarch, vanilla, and a little sugar. The full measurement is going to be written out in the description box below and then it's time to roll the dough. So I usually roll forwards and back side to side and then I rotate 90 degrees. Every fourth rotation, I'll go ahead and reflower the surface underneath, flip it over. That way I don't get any sticking. I make sure that there's a good amount of flour on both sides and I can roll this out into a nice big shape. You will notice some cracking that's totally normal when it comes to pie crust. Just pinch the sides together and continue to roll. If it's cracking too much, that means the dough is too cold. And if you start to see a sheen, like a glossiness or a greasiness, that means it's too warm. And if it gets too warm, you're just gonna pop the dough back into the fridge. I like to use the pie plate as a guide, so I kind of use that as a measurement to make sure that I have at least two inches around the edges, and then I'll roll it around my pie roller, rolling pin, that's what it's called, and uh, transfer it to the pie dish. Then as you can see, I'm kind of making sure that it really hits the bottom edges of the pie dish. You wanna make sure that the sides are touching and there's no gaps. 
You're gonna see a couple of different pies here. I, I filmed a few different versions that I made, so you'll see a glass dish and a ceramic dish. When I was using the glass dish that you see here, I actually think I could have used a little bit more dough. Like I think I didn't need to trim that off because the way that this dish is designed is that the lip kind of extends pretty far out, meaning that the dough gets really thin on that part and it does tend to burn. So if you have a pie dish like that, you're probably gonna wanna cover the sides with some aluminum. But either way, you're gonna go ahead and crimp. Now I love this ceramic pie dish I'll link it below but it's basically already fluted so you can easily make a nice edge without really doing much like if you're not comfortable with crimping all you really have to do is just lay the dough on top of it and use your knuckles and your two fingers like I'm doing here to kind of make a guide and it works really well but on the pie dish that's glass as you can see it's just a flat surface so I do the same thing with either my index finger or my knuckle and just go all the way around but like I said it was a little bit too thin on that version so I recommend making it nice and thick so you have a thick delicious crust because that's one of my favorite parts then you're gonna go ahead and add the pie filling and we'll decorate the top so I roll out that third remember we divided the dough into thirds and I saved one third that's for the top so I'm just gonna roll that out and I use a cookie cutter to cut really cute starred shapes and I just sort of arrange them on top you can have them separated you can have them overlapping whatever you want to do and if you've ever been intimidated about decorating a pie and doing a very intricate lattice this is a foolproof way to make a really cute looking pie and one that really looks like you took your time and put some effort into it even though it's super super simple you're just gonna cut out your cookie cutter shapes arrange them on top and instead of an egg wash I'm gonna brush on a little bit of soy milk and I like to sprinkle on some terminado sugar this is sometimes called demerara sugar and it's completely optional you don't have to but I really love not only the texture it adds a little bit of crunch but it also adds this really pretty kind of sparkliness so I like to keep a bag of this on hand and I use it for recipes like this I also like to sprinkle it on top of like loaf cakes like banana bread or my apple muffins you know that kind of thing so it's just a nice ingredient to have on hand and it's during this time that I'm rolling out the pie dough and shaping the crust and putting on the finishing touches of the sprinkling of sugar and all that like that's when I really feel like I'm back in art class and I'm a kid playing with my hands making something just because it's fun to make something and yes you end up with this delicious dessert which is a flaky buttery delicious crust and a jammy blueberry filling that I personally love to serve with ice cream, but it's also this really relaxed state that I get into. I kind of lose track of time. Everything slows down because we live in such a digital world where everything is so stimulating and so fast paced and pie making is not that. It takes some time and there are some steps. It's all easy, but it requires a bit of focus and patience and I kind of love that. If you like this recipe, you'll probably also like my peach and raspberry crumble, which I will link in the description box below, as well as my baking playlist with lots of vegan baking recipes that you guys will enjoy. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye-bye.